Okay, Mark. Thank you so much for joining. As usual, love your advice and your wisdom. So, okay, so today's topic is how to deal, how do self-employed people deal with their finances or just planning? And also for like myself, for realtors out there that are listening, um, what do you do with your finances and how do you strategize? So Mark, um, what are some tips and strategies that you would like to share? Sure, sure, thank you. Uh, you know, I was a realtor in the early 90s myself and uh, you listen to people like uh, Brian Buffini and Zig Ziglar and even Tony Robbins. You know, the number one place for you to always invest your money, uh, time and effort and energy is yourself. If there's a way for you to get more sales in whatever business you're in, you know, that's always gonna be number one. Uh, people probably don't need to do too much outside of their business for a while until they're really ready for diversifying and they want cash flow streams that they don't necessarily have to work for. And, you know, what's really common for realtors, of course, is real estate. They love to buy real estate. Uh, it's one of the easiest, uh, potentially faster ways to build up that wealth and cash flow. And, you know, you meet a lot of really wealthy people, many of them. At one time, I read a a statistic that said 90% of the, the millionaires made it through real estate. I'm not sure that's true or not, but it, it definitely has helped out a lot of people I know. And, and so that's kind of the stuff that's in the middle bucket, you know, your, your business, your uh, real estate, your rental properties, your mutual funds and your stocks. And none of that is really sheltered though. You get some depreciation on the real estate and that sort of thing, some nice tax deductions, but Something that happened for 2020 that's really unique is they passed a law that says uh, we can go retroactive. From now until October 15th, we can go retroactive into tax deductible contributions into a 401k. Uh, those are really easy to set up now. They don't cost too much money. A self-employed person without any employees can put away you know, maybe around 26 grand or so into their uh, profit sharing portion of the 401k for 2020, they can still do that. It takes me about half an hour to set one up. No big deal. Another one that's a little more complicated, it, it takes a week to get set up, is the defined benefit program. And people could put well over $100,000 into the defined benefit program. The challenge is you've got to have $100,000 to put in. And uh, you really should be able to put away whatever the calculation is, you should be able to put away that money for the next five years. So if you had a one-off really big year in 2020, that may not be the way to go. But if you have other money that is unsheltered from taxes, if you will, that you could use to put into the defined benefit pension program, uh, you could consider that a, a possibility where you might shift some other money or for some other assets in there. And especially for people that don't have a large amount of money that they have deducted yet. If they don't have a big SEP IRA or a big traditional IRA or a big 401k already, if they're over 50, this might be the time to start uh, putting some money in that first pre-tax bucket that I call it uh, to get some tax deductions for 2020, especially if 2020 was a really big year, they might consider the 401k uh, at least. And then for this year, they could put away somewhere between 59 and $64,000, depending on their age, uh, pre tax if they want. So, uh, but you know, here again, this is for people that want to diversify. They don't want to triple down on their business. Uh, maybe they've got a Subway franchise or two, or they have a, a carpet installation business, or they they sell some kind of product. They want to diversify away from their main business and get into some of those paper assets like stocks and bonds, but they can do self-directed as well. And a number of people have been able to accumulate enough money in their defined benefit program or their solo 401k where they could use an outside administrator like uh, Intrust in San Francisco and they could go out and buy real estate. They can usually get a non-recourse loan for 50% of the purchase value. 
and the uh, down payment or the 50% uh, money would come from their 401k that's self-directed or their self-directed IRA or their self-directed defined benefit. And that's a way for some realtors to possibly get a client they may not have gotten before. Maybe these potential people have 2 million in their 401k in the stock market. They've been burned by it a little bit. Maybe they should do self-directed for half of that, put a million in a self-directed account and use that money to buy $2 million worth of real estate. Okay, well, that would be a strategy to, that's worth talking about for sure. Um, so, so just so from, from a recap of what you said is if someone hasn't done their taxes yet and they want to use some write-offs and also invest in themselves to have some type of retirement startup, if you already haven't started to start or if you have started to add to it, but you still have time, they still have time. Yeah, this, usually these things have to be done in the prior year, um, but the, the Congress passed the new law saying that the employer contributions to retirement plans, uh, which used to mean only the SEP IRA, but now they have included the employer contribution for the 401k and the defined benefit program. So we have until October 15th to fund it, but don't call me on October 15th. If you want to do something like this, you better start doing it today so you get comfortable with it. But at the latest, you know, the, the middle of September, don't put your financial advisor through all heck to, you know, dial 911 to get your thing uh, going on. Because if you think you might want to do this, you really should get comfortable with it. Uh, soon. And it's not the answer for everybody. Some people should be doing Roth IRAs and, and that sort of thing. It really depends on their situation. And they should sit down with uh, possibly their business coach and possibly their tax person and kind of map out, you know, how long are they going to be self-employed and what is their likely income traje trajectory and are they going to be able to live off of their rental income or, or not? Uh, if not, well, what can we do to get some tax-free cash flow? You know, that's my favorite tax-free cash flow. For sure. Okay, so, so if someone wanted to get started, I, you'd probably recommend, from what my experience, is that contacting their, their tax person, CPA, and then if they wanted to do something like this, invest in themselves to see how that could offset some of their tax deductions potentially or um, how much they end up owing just by investing in themselves. Um, so there's different ways to go about it, but how long does that process take? Let's say someone hasn't done it, but they could, they have a little extra money to invest in themselves and they could use a write-off. How much, how long? Would yeah. That so if, if they were looking to do a traditional IRA or an SEP IRA, uh, that would take about an hour to get that set up and then probably about three days for them to move the money into the account. A 401k is probably going to take, uh, I would say, at least a week. I don't like to try to do it sooner than that. And a defined benefit program is usually going to take at least two weeks to get that set up and, and funded because that's going to require a third-party administrator and an actuary and, and that sort of stuff. But, you know, uh, they should start looking into it now. They might decide... It's not worth it to do it for 2020, but we could start funding 2021 uh, right now. You know, I had a mortgage person in uh, January of this year. They fully funded their 2020 401k, and they also fully funded their 2021 401k. They got almost $100,000 between those two years off the tax return. I mean, when, when you're in the 54% tax bracket, getting a $100,000 tax deduction is pretty amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. So you invest in yourself and you pay less taxes out. Yeah. And, you know, some people get a bit, get, get worried about what are they going to invest in? And, and I would normally tell people during tax season, just get the account. First of all, get comfortable with what you're going to do, what the strategy is get the account funded, you don't have to buy an investment right away. We just have to get the receipt that the money is in there. It could be in cash for a month or two, 
until you're comfortable. You know, the stock market just hit an all-time high uh, last week, you know, for the, for the Dow Jones. Maybe you don't want to put it all in the stock market uh, right now. That's okay. There's some other boring investments that you might choose. Uh, but you've got to satisfy the IRS and you've got to get the account open and funded in order to qualify for the deduction. Okay. All right. So for guys, for you guys who, um, you know, for myself, I've been pretty bad of just, I, I usually kind of like in the past years, just invest in real estate, but I haven't really invested in myself. So I really just started working with Mark to get it all together, strategizing with my tax people, trying to figure out how I could pay less taxes and give money to myself. So, you know, we also, we, we, these conversations are really to encourage you to take care of you. When we have some money, we, we have these financial conversations. These are so important to figure out how to strategize. And you just have to have the right guidance. And maybe there's somebody that has like some of these strategies I didn't know. And Mark gave me some strategies to, to say, okay, this is what you can do. And was able to help me not pay as much taxes, but also now have, I'm starting to invest in myself. So. We got to take care of ourselves. Sometimes we just, we, we make our money and we don't see anything later. And we want to, we don't want to be in a position where we, where we have lack of funds for retirement. Um, but anyway, thank you so much, Mark. If you have any questions and you want to get a hold of Mark, you want to talk about strategy, you just, you know, you may, it doesn't matter. It could be anything financial related. What is the best way to contact you? You know, I just tell people to call me on my cell phone. Uh, 415-596-9933. Uh, 415-596-9933. Uh, LinkedIn is another good way. Uh, there aren't many Mark Porter financial planners in San Francisco. So my Ameriprise website uh, is, is easy to get a hold of. And it's a quick conversation about, you know, uh, what are you trying to do? And uh, what are you scared of? And what do you want to avoid? And let's figure out a strategy for you. Nine out of 10 times, they can do the strategy themselves without our help, uh, which is great. A little bit different than the real estate business. People definitely got to have a realtor. Um, uh, buying a house on your own without a realtor, uh, even if you use a lawyer, you often, off, off, oftentimes miss out on negotiation tactics that a local uh, realtor in tune with things will pick up on and you know, the attorney's just there to collect their 400 an hour. Um, they're not going to be the best at, at negotiating. So it's a little different in the financial planning world. When people learn about how to do things, they could do a few things on their own and they could do pretty good for, yeah, for quite a while. But it's either. I mean, there's strategies that the most savvy hasn't thought about. So no, there's look, there's, there's definitely value in what you do. I mean, I, you know, I talk about this all the time and some of the things that you talked about was like, okay, like a lot of people didn't bring up some things that you brought up. So I agree. I appreciate that. So we need, we need people who specialize in what they do to give us guidance. Like we don't want a generalist. We want someone that says, Hey, I've been around long enough. Like me being a real estate for over 20 years, I've been around long enough. I can foresee a lot of things and I can strategize like you, you've been doing financial planning and real estate but you've been doing financial planning for a long time. So you can see the bigger picture and figure out how to strategize. So utilize us if yeah. you have any questions. Mark is always, always available to answer questions. And if you're just curious, and if you think that, you know, you, you may have somebody, but if you want to see, get a second opinion or figure out like if your path of way you've been doing finances have been on track, he'll tell you if it's on track. If he thinks there's another way to go about it, why wouldn't you want to know, right? So. Yeah. All right, guys, thanks for joining us today. And then let us know if there's any topics that you want to know about. We are oh, happy yeah. to talk about it.